Ah, uh, my favorite part of the video, the blank slate. What will we learn this week? Only I know, but soon you will know. This week, we're going to take a little step back because I feel like I have to step back and explain the whole pipeline process of how a 3D model goes from beginning stages to complete being rendered in the engine. I feel like if we don't step back and take a look at the process, then we'll lose some of the justification of continuing with the later videos and maybe some context. So let's take a look at that process. Personally, I am not an artist, so I'm not involved with most of this process, but it's still important as a programmer for me to understand it. Maybe you are an artist, in which case you're a better artist than I am because, as you've probably seen in the previous videos, I'm a poor artist. Or not an artist, whichever you prefer. So in that case, you're going to be developing this art, you're going to be going through this process and then once you get into the programming stage, implementing that math yourself. So let's get started. Here's where most models start. This is a screenshot from Maya. I think it's some World of Warcraft models going in there. I don't know because I don't play World of Warcraft, unfortunately. But this is where all models start. An artist loads up a 3D modeling program like Maya, builds all of the triangles in this program, so the programmer doesn't have to type in the triangles manually like we've been doing. Maya and Max and Blender and Silo and Mudbox and well, what's that other one? With the there's tons of them, and they have many powerful tools to make the triangles do basically whatever you want. Then after the triangles are all made, there's a there's a series of steps that you go through to export and convert the triangles into a format that the game engine can understand. So this is these are the files that I found on my hard drive. These are Valve's source engine uh, files for a game that I'm working on. You can see there's an office chair, a light bulb, a sofa. Um, once they're in this format, once they're in this format, then the game engine can load them. And that happens during the loading stage. We discussed this stage in the previous video. This is the loading screen for My Little Pony. Um, I believe I wouldn't know because I do not play My Little Pony. I swear. But while games are being loaded, this is what's happening. All of this stuff from the, uh, from the disc, all of these triangles, these are a bunch of files with triangles in them. They're all being loaded into the graphics processor, into the GPU, into the video card. And then finally, as you play, this is uh, Deus Ex Human Revolution, which I have sitting on my hard drive ready to play as soon as I get the time. All the triangles are now rendered to the screen for your gaming pleasure. So that's the whole process. Now we... are not going to be concerned with most of this process. These three things we're really not going to have anything to do with. Um, we, we could, we, I mean, there's a lot of math here, but there's even more math here in game and there's a lot of duplication, so I'm just going to focus on the in-game stuff. So you may, you may see, we're going to work with sim simple rectangles and, and boxes and that sort of thing. Because actually, to be honest, as I'm developing a game, a lot of times I start with rectangles and boxes and simple sprites and I design with those and then later an artist will come and fill in the, uh, the pretty art. And so it's entirely possible for us to work entirely in the game engine and learn all the math that we need to do just in the game engine. So I'm going to be mostly ignoring these three steps over here. But once you're aware of the math that we use in the game engine, it's basically the same math as you use in these other three steps. So you should be able to extrapolate and, and apply. And we may actually go back and cover some of these things at a later time if, uh, if we find some interesting topics. So that's it for now. Next week we are going to get started with figuring out how to apply textures to our triangle meshes. And so I have textured models. See you next week.